Uh, will she? Won't she? That is the question as Prince Harry's return trip to Britain draws ever closer. But will Meghan accompany her husband to celebrate the 10th anniversary of his beloved Invictus Games? She hasn't been to the lol UK since the Queen's funeral, but in a couple of weeks, Harry is due to speak at a special service of thanks at St Paul's Cathedral. His wife, uh, an ex-cable actress currently identifying as the Duchess of Sussex, is on the VIP guest list. But what are the chances of jam selling former game show glamour girl Ms Markle adding her sparkle? My prediction, slim to zero. I believe that after crossing the Atlantic to pay her respects to Her Majesty, Meghan decided she would never again set foot in a country she seems to delight in bad-mouthing. A country that Little Miss California apparently thinks is full of racists who benefited from a slave trade that ended when Britain abolished slavery in 1807, which, FYI, Meg, was 58 years before the United States did. But ever since the shock of Megxit in 2020, when the dreaded Duke and Duchess duo quit their royal duties and ran away to Canada, mutual loathing has been the name of the bitter game. Uh, she clearly doesn't like Brits a whole lot, and frankly, after her initial wild popularity, she's not regaining the UK's National Sweetheart Award anytime soon. Uh, with the possible exception of Harry, no one particularly wants to see her in London. Stay where you are, Meg. Look after the kids, enjoy the West Coast sun, flog us overpriced jam on your boringly beige lifestyle website, American Riviera Orchard. What? Uh, stage a spot more of the virtue signalling for which you are rightly renowned and spend maybe a decade in Timbuktu. Anything just as long as you steer well clear of Great Britain. But while we hope we miss Meghan, will Harry miss his dad and brother? Uh, and the rest of the royals, for that matter. The last time the Invictus Games for injured and wounded war heroes was held in the UK, it was during happier times before Harry and Meghan's dramatic exit destroyed palace harmony for the foreseeable future. In those distant days, all was sweetness and light. A full regal contingent turned out to support Invictus. A decade ago, before oceans of water flowed under the bridge, the then Prince Charles pitched up at the opening ceremony along with William and Kate. Since then, Harry and his American missus have reportedly noted that the royal gang have been distinctly lukewarm about backing Invictus. Gee, wonder if that's got anything to do with the Sussexes' trash-for-cash career choice, making money out of selling Charles and his family down the river. Goes without saying that Harry is still moaning about the armed police protection the British courts have decided that neither he, Meghan, or their kids warrant. So, if the ginger winger comes alone, rest assured he will blame the UK for not paying for his family's security. But who will the professional victim prince blame for the King and Co's absence if, as expected, there are no-shows at St Paul's? My guess, everyone except the person whose fault it undoubtedly is him. I'm right, aren't I there? Completely uh, and utterly uh, wrong. Uh, no, first of all, surprised you said that. <laughs> first of all, I think Meghan will come to support her husband because she's a good wife. And when she comes here, that will shut you, how do you right know? up. How do you know how she's do, a good wife? How do you know she's not a good wife? She's a good wife because well, she supports him it's everything. It's a matter of conjecture for both of us, <laughs> isn't it? No, we don't not. know. No, no. We I don't know. know. I know from, from his own words how good a wife she is. So I think... Well, that's no good. <laughs> I mean, it? both of them are a bit of the liars, ah, aren't they? Ah, we know ah. that from that interview with She's going to come to the UK and support her husband, and then that'll make you shut the Well, You'll never say anything about her again. <laughs> well, I did, you know, I could be wrong. Uh, I often am, but uh, <laughs> more of that later. Uh, your views, uh, Daisy? Yeah, I think there's a good chance, a better chance than you think there is, of Meghan coming over, partly to stick two fingers up. I, yeah. think, I, th I think they'd probably find it quite pleasing to be able to do their handy-holdy thing and walk down uh, the Isle of St Paul's and her be there. 
And I hope, and I've got nothing to base this on other than hope, that the royals do turn up for Invictus because that does seem to yeah, me... I agree with that, well, yeah. the, the royals are, you know, they, they are commander... He, he, the king, is commander-in-chief. Yeah. They all have different uh, regiments that they are, uh, you know, colonel of. And they, they hold veterans and the military very, very dear to their hearts. Nah, so I think it up. would be a good thing. King, I hope king Charles is battling cancer, so he won't, he won't be turning up. He wants to keep away from everyone. And uh, William hates Harry, so he ain't going to turn up. Yeah. Princess Anne may attend, um, and I'd be happy with that. I think you're wrong about the king as well, because we've been seeing, you know, at, East, might, yeah. at Easter, we saw him go to the Easter service and come out in glad hand. 56 handshakes he made uh, mm. outside the church. And now that obviously was an outdoor occasion. So his mm. doctors, very much like you know, during the pandemic, we were all told if you have to be with people, do it outside, not inside. You've got less chance of catching something if you're immunocompromised as he is. Yeah. But then the words from Buckingham Palace ha coming out since then have been... You know, you could expect to see a bit more of him being out and about, going to some more events where there will be more people. So I can see him going to St Paul's. I really can. Uh, well, I hope he does, because, uh, you, know, uh, you know, as you know, I'm not uh, backwards in coming forwards in my criticism of Prince Harry, but uh, the Invictus Games is a damn fine event. And I think the Royals, uh, at least for this occasion, should bury the hatchet. They should all bury the hatchet, at least, and get behind this game Games which uh, honour, of course, uh, our wounded uh, war hero. I can't see um, William doing it. Old sausage We're, fingers, he, he might turn up. But, <laughs> but William didn't want to be in the same room as his brother on a TV screen for, to honour his mum. He ain't going to turn up to the Invictus Games in, in, so in the right, UK. Man. That was the Diana Award. Yeah. Where yeah. they couldn't even bear to share yeah. the same screen. Yeah. Let alone the same room. Yeah. And then before that, the time when they went to the unveiling of the Diana uh, statues yes, and they in, stood like in, this. in gardens. And that was before we knew the full extent yeah. of the vitriol and, and the problems therein. But yeah, they were all... Like that, turn away. Yeah, they, turn were, away. they were like that. Like that. Uh, uh, like that. And then they, like they, that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they pulled like the cover off, <laughs> off the statue. Yeah. It's okay, you two. You don't have to ax these things out. <laughs> But thank you, thank you. It's very illustrative. You know? <laughs> By the way, I think I, the thing I like about Charles, he's got, he does have the gift of understatement, doesn't he? So yeah. uh, we're filming this just after he went to the Bank of England uh, because guess what? He, the banknotes are out now with his pictures on. So he was supposed to go months ago, a couple of months ago. Uh, but, uh, of course, then came the cancer diagnosis. So he goes to the Bank of England yesterday, uh, goes up to uh, Andrew Bailey, the governor, and he goes... <laughs> Sorry, uh, I've been a bit delayed. <laughs> That's quite good. Isn't it, it is good. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. But yeah. to the bank note, he looks really angry on it. He looks I less than amused. I don't think he does. I think he looks fine. I think oh, he looks Daisy, normal. Get your head out of Charles's ass, hey. yeah. bloody hell! Yeah. This, is, <laughs> this is one of those stories, possibly apocryphal, but uh, up near Balmoral, uh, when the Queen was still in her pomp uh, and heyday, uh, she was well known for going to the local village to do a bit of shopping sometimes. And so this was back in the days. Do you remember? Well. Uh, you probably both don't, but there used to be that <laughs> when you used to write a check and then yeah. you had to show uh, ID to yeah. get that yeah. so before they took the check. So she went in uh, and you, you'd have a bank card or you'd have to have photo ID and she went in and she wrote a check and they said, it was a grocery store, they said, have you got any ID? And she goes, look, you see that banknote? That's me. <laughs> <laughs> and, there are so and many... apparently they took the cheque. <laughs> there are so many good stories about Balmoral, because that obviously was the favourite place for Philip as well as uh -huh. the Queen. And there are all those stories about them out walking in the locks and the glens, yeah. um, around that, where, which is open countryside. Yeah. It's not yeah. private land. And so they would bump into... Strange... And in fact, I think it was an American they bumped into once who went up to Philip, yeah. who was walking a bit behind the That's Queen, and said, is that, that, that looks like the Queen. Is that, is that the Queen? <laughs> oh, is that the Queen? <laughs> and he kept it going and didn't admit that, yes, that's my wife, the Queen. Yeah. <laughs> king Charles, I think, is a, a good king. He's my second favourite royal. I don't think he's going to risk William's wrath. I think William will be angry at his dad if he shows support to Harry when Harry comes over. Yeah, it's an interesting uh, powder keg of tension there, but uh, it is time now for a bad ad. Selective introductions to the beautiful people and their private phone numbers are waiting for you 24 hours a day. Call 1-900-500-5000 for those private phone numbers. $5 a call, adults only, for selective introductions to the beautiful people 
and those private phone numbers. Call 1-900-500-5000. Do it now. I'll tell you, there's a better way you can get private numbers. Dial 1-800-WILLIAM-RAG. William Rag, that's the, what I was going to say. The Tory MP, it's an MP, it's a <laughs> member of parliament over here for our American viewers who's just been nicked or caught, uh, basically giving private numbers yeah, uh, to he, loads of people. He so. pretty much blackmailed into he giving out yeah. MPs, so he MPs so private so phone so numbers. So that advert's ridiculous. There's not one beautiful person in that advert. I don't want any of those people's numbers. The guy they're looked like, like a Nazi. Yeah, and that's a, a serial killer. They're all like looking weird. By like... the way, you know, I, 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 it's, it's a sort of Ralph Lauren look, you know, with a slight collar up, but that was yeah. a collar up, wasn't it? I mean, yeah. it was like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Vulcan or Hill. something. It's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, yeah, not beautiful people, but can I get those numbers, please? <laughs> uh, uh, we've got some mean tweets, I do believe, uh, JJ. Yes. Yeah. I should have had my phone ready for this, shouldn't I? Yeah, uh, it would have, <laughs> would have been the professional thing to do. But, can't uh, find them let's, now, can you? Let's, let's stick rigidly to our amateurishness, shall we? <laughs> Here we go. So the first one, not even a mean tweet, just a tweet about Daisy McAndrew. Oh. Daisy McAndrew is a very attractive woman. Hashtag talk TV. What's mean about <laughs> that? that? That's it, that's it, that's the whole tweet. That's the whole tweet. Thanks, Mum. Um, <laughs> then, <laughs> then there's another one uh, at you. Um, why don't talk TV's Vanessa Feltz, Julia Hartley Brewer, and Daisy McAndrew form a political party? Oh. <laughs> I think you'd storm to power very, very soon. You would be I mean, the most it, it, frightening political force this country has I, ever seen. I, I think we could call it a grand coalition. A grand coalition, oh, yeah. yeah. Couldn't we? Because that's his problem. Grandma much... coalition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma coalition. <laughs> a coalition yeah. of grannies. A coalition yeah. of grannies. <laughs> Vanessa Feltz is the only granny of the three of us. <laughs> Julie and I have kids exactly the same age. Yeah. <laughs> there was one mean one about me. <clears throat> JJ cannot present for Toffee. Stumbled across him again early this afternoon. Awful. What the no, hell? That was mine. <laughs> I was like, I don't present for Toffee, I present for Talk TV. You don't hear what that the hell? <laughs> I was going to say, the, the, the fees and Toffee are pretty much <laughs> equidistant. <laughs> Actually, he does present <laughs> for, a for a Toffee. Actually, yeah. that's doing him down. He demands yeah. at least five Toffees per yeah, show. Exactly. And, uh, and a Werther's original. And a Werther's. Yeah, and, a wor yeah, and luncheon <laughs> vouchers. Uh, Kevin, here's the last one. It's all about you. Good to see your paid idiot, Kevin O'Sullivan, ah. shouting all over the TV that he doesn't trust the police. So vocal. What he was he that dumb? Sidekick Alex complained she had ringing in her ears. Does this b represent Talk TV's view of the police? Uh, could you, uh, whoever you are, could you send us that again? Only this time in English. <laughs> what the f is that all about? I think I think JJ was just exhibiting his presenting skills. <laughs> but, 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 but Toffee. <laughs> Showcasing his skills. <laughs> what a present. He's a natural, <laughs> natural loser. Uh, now, uh, it is time now for a real break. What just happened? He's mad as hell. It's Kevin O'Sullivan. Ah, welcome back to the greatest television program ever made. I'm the host, Kevin O'Sullivan, and it's got what just happened. And uh, I still haven't managed to get rid of JJ and the COB. He's still in the studio. Uh, <laughs> security, <laughs> get rid, get rid of him. Uh, and the great Daisy McCann, who, uh, who's a royal expert actually, so she'll be very interested in this next monologue of mine, which you'll never get. It's about the royals. Huh. Uh, now. <laughs> Earlier in this glittering award-resistant edition of What Just Happened, I predicted that Meghan is unlikely to attend the London celebrations to mark the 10th anniversary of Prince Harry's excellent Invictus Games. I could be wrong. I often am. But, uh, see, I do admit these things. Uh, actually, it's very rare that I'm wrong, come to think of it. But this is one special occasion upon which I believe that the relentlessly ambitious Ms Markle will resist her natural inclination to steal the limelight. It won't be easy for her, because some might say that the so-called Duchess of Sussex chases positive publicity like a woman possessed. In fact, critics cruelly suggest that she's never seen a glowing headline she wasn't jealous of. However, 
When the going gets tough, Machiavellian Meg knows how to keep her head down, like she did throughout the furious fallout surrounding her hapless husband's nasty little book, Spare. As Harry toured the chat show studios, plugging his ghastly ghost-written autobiography, catching furious flack for its extraordinary spitefulness, Meghan maintained a low profile away from all the problems. But when the backlash against Harry died down, his wife suddenly exploded back into view. In one frenetic week, she emerged from the couple's massive Montecito mansion, sporting a whole new natural look, accompanied Harry to an LA Lakers basketball game and staged a public display of affection that quashed rumors the marriage was in trouble. Two days later, Hollywood's Bible Variety magazine revealed that Meghan had signed with a super agent and was all set to embark on a lucrative new career as a million dollar per post influencer. That never seemed to materialize. If you're the sort of person who would buy stuff because Meghan told you to, it might be time to recalibrate your approach to life. Just a thought. Only recently, uh, when the world took leave of its senses over Princess Kate's dubious editing of that now notorious Mother's Day family photo, sources allegedly close to the Sussexes came out of the woodwork to stress that it would never happen to Meghan because she has a keen eye, this is a quote, she has a keen eye and a freakish attention to detail. So talented. The source went on to tell the New York Post's famous page six gossip column that in the same circumstances, the Sussexes would have been annihilated because they're treated differently to saintly Kate and William. This little journalistic exocet was followed by an official Harry and Meghan statement stressing, with respect to page six, that did not come from us. What definitely did come from Meghan, though, was last month's unleashing of her torturously named, breathtakingly beige lifestyle site, American Riviera Orchard. Your chance to purchase the Duchess's high-priced household goods, including cushions, kitchenware, and drum roll jam. Uh, the crippling cost of the cutlery is arguably a new form of knife crime. Experts <laughs> warn that Meg's brand risks accusations of blatantly cashing in on her royal status. Oh, perish the thought. But it was the timing of the launch that really ruffled regal feathers. There she was in all her sun-kissed Californian glory, opening her online shop for business on the very same day that Prince William was hosting the Diana Awards in London. You might think that was a deliberate and shameful attempt to overshadow the dour old royals back in dull old Britain but I couldn't possibly comment. But of this much, you can rest assured, when it comes to PR, Meghan knows exactly what she's doing. No one, but no one, plays the media game like Ms Markle. What a gal. Uh, she is good at PR, isn't she? Uh, yeah, and I think she's going to make an absolute fortune out of that website. I think there are naysayers and cynics on this side of the pond who just on this don't, side of the desk on this <laughs> side of, who, who just don't understand how that celebrity endorsement thing works and how much money there is to be made. You know, it's called brand slap, where you somebody comes to you and says, "Do you want to sell this wine or whatever it might be?" and you put your name to it. I mean, I was looking at you know, Kylie Minogue sells seven million bottles of wine. A year. That rosé, it's not bad, by the way. There you go. Right. It's it's the it's the um, biggest the way, selling so rosé in our Did, supermarkets. Uh, uh, this is not, not for our American viewers. Did you ever try uh, Philip Schofield's wine? No. It tasted like utter piss. Not that I've ever <laughs> tried piss. It was disgusting. <laughs> Everybody yeah. said so. But anyway, you were talking about uh, um, celebrity endorsements. Celebrity endorsements. I mean, Graham Norton. I was looking it up. He makes millions, like something like fifteen million a year from I can't remember. It's a gin or something. Ryan Ryan Reynolds has just sold his stake in uh, aviation gin to yeah. Diageo for $610 million. This is a Fuck. massive, massive market, you know, this celebrity. And then you add in the wellness, you know, the goop stuff, the, uh, you know, all of that, that side of things, which she'll definitely be into. And yes, people who don't like her won't buy it, but there are enough people who want a bit of that, mm. want a bit of royal, mm. want a bit of Hollywood, want a bit sure. of, you know, celebrity. She will make money. Sylvester Stallone sells a pen that 
that retails at forty-eight thousand dollars, and he sells them. Well, you know, it's big business. Before I uh, get there your you view, uh, view on this issue, uh, everybody, uh, this is the Kevin O'Sullivan <laughs> pen. Uh, you can buy it for considerably less than forty-eight thousand dollars. I'll give you a uh, toffee for it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and also before we get actually, let's <laughs> your view. <viewpoint. laughs> uh, so what we're going to look at is a bit of celebrity endorsement by uh, former president and probably future president Donald Trump. Take it away, the Donald. If you like your steak, you'll absolutely love Trump steaks. Treat yourself to the very, very best life has to offer. And as a gift, Trump steaks are the best you can give. The thing is, that there is definitely this pattern that if there's an announcement, uh, you know, particularly by <sighs> Wait, uh, William and Kate or anything, she's the next day she's going to come Kevin. up with something. She 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 definitely plays the publicity Kevin. game and she definitely wants to overshadow the Kevin. British royal. No. I, made, I made a few notes about your monologue, Kevin. Here, yeah, let's yeah. let's go through them. You said I didn't she, know you could write. She, she, I typed it. <laughs> she's chasing positive publicity. Who doesn't? No one chases negative publicity apart from you. Most people want positive headlines about themselves. So that you're wrong on that. Not being sent to stage. I chase negative. <laughs> I just get it. I created. Yeah, I'm um, natural. Not being sent to stage for Harry's book tour. Why should she be there? The book was all about Harry and his life and his existence. If she'd been there with him, people were like, why is she trying to hug the limelight? So there you me. go. King Charles sells jam. You're going to slag off Meghan for selling jam. King Charles sells jam yeah. too. He sells, he sells all kinds of crap. Yeah. So there you go. I she didn't steal the limelight from William because Harry was also at, at Diana's um, uh, okay. Legacy Awards. So Harry would have also said to Meghan, by the way, um, if you want to do this, then make the announcement, that's fine. I'm going to be there too. So it's not, it wasn't like she used to attack William. Harry's part of that. And finally... It's, by the way, has the king still got the Duchy of Cornwall? Yeah, it's, it, it's it, gone to William. It's gone to William now. Yeah, so he doesn't sell Germany anymore. <laughs> William does. <laughs> uh -huh. And finally, the only compliment you've paid her is that you say that she plays the media game very well. But I would say that she, actually she doesn't because the media, both sides of the Atlantic, have turned against her and Harry and now they get ridiculed. So I'd say actually she hasn't played the media game well at all and she needs someone better to be doing her comms. And, there and you I'm, go, folks. JJ, uh, Good Anderson night. Obi, Meg, <laughs> Megan is shit at publicity. <laughs> <laughs> Megan is shit. Uh, that's from JJ, who <laughs> loves Harry and Meghan and hates America. Uh, now it's time for a bad ad. What makes people all over America break down and cry like this? Call 1-900-9099-CRY and hear it for yourself. $2 for the first minute, 45 cents each additional minute. If you're under 18, ask your parents before you call. one 900 9099 cry. So are those people calling this cry line? Yeah, you call the cry line and you hear people <laughs> crying. crying. But yeah. that is because you want to cry as well. Or you just like the sound of people crying. What's his name? Enrique Iglesias Jr. the song um, called I Love to Hear You Cry. Yeah, but, but, the, yeah, but it, just, it wasn't called I Love to Give You a Ring in here. <laughs> I, love, I and, love to hear you cry on the end of the phone. And charge you for it. Yeah, and they yeah. charge you. <laughs> Charge you for it. And if you... Anyway, uh, that is the end of another fantastic show. I want to say, uh, I want to say thank you to JJ and the COB, but I'm unable to do so because he's been f <laughs> this as always. Uh, but I do want to say thank you to the excellent Daisy McCann. Did he just say, I do want to say f to the excellent he Daisy McCann? Well, he did. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah. You, know that, you know that tweet you got earlier? That was from me. And by the way, don't forget, you can buy the Kevin O'Sullivan pen, the What Just Happened pen. It is only... Four hundred dollars. So <laughs> give me a call. One eight hundred. I'm a greedy. <laughs> I've been Kevin O'Sullivan. They've been great. See ya. What just happened?